today's the day. The sun is shining. I'm going to London. I'm so excited. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, gotta bring the crocs. Grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. So life ain't easy, yo. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo. Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though. I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo. And here we are coming into beautiful England. I was super excited. Uh, the plane ride was really smooth and customs was incredibly smooth. When we got there, I actually got to take the Elizabeth line, which was not open when I studied abroad. It was still a work in progress. The hostel we stayed in was super cute. It was near Mile End Station, so it was in the Tower Hamlets borough. And um, I would recommend it. I'll link it down below if you're looking to stay in England, in London specifically. I think it's a great place. I live my life in my did take a nap. After that though, we headed over to Camden Market, which is a really cool place. It was super crowded, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I think that even though it was really rainy, it was like the perfect place to go. We went to a bunch of the shops there and we also ate and the food was fantastic. There were so many food options I could eat there forever, but my favorite place to visit while we were there was the Moomin Shop. I purchased quite a few things. I wish there were Moomin Shops in the US. So next day was bright and early. We got up, we went to the attendant, which used to be a Victorian bathroom stall and is now a cafe. It was so tight in there that I couldn't record anything. We also went to Gandalf's Circle and Gaze the Word. Gandalf's Circle was um, a, like, basically it's just a intersection where you shall not pass. And Gaze the Word was an amazing bookshop. Also super, super crowded though. So I didn't want to record and get other people in it who didn't want to be in it. And then we took a bus to South Bank where we pretty much wandered around for the rest of our day. It was beautiful and wonderful there. We went to the Shrek store. We did not go to the actual exhibit. We just kind of popped in and out and we ended up eating at the National Theater. They had uh, the curb at the understudy or something was what it was called. It might have been my favorite meal. I loved it so much. It was like fried chicken and this garlicky sauce. It, it literally, it was delicious. I, we should have gone back. <laughs> it was that good. We both really enjoyed it. And then we went to St. Dunstan's East, which was so soothing and so relaxing. There were a lot of people there taking pictures and actually a lot of Harry Potter cosplayers as well. I could have spent hours in this location and it's actually inspired me to try to find something similar, probably not in aesthetics, but in vibes and in 
a soothingness, like relaxation, nearer me because it was just so beautiful and so lovely and wonderful, wonderful experience. was Sunday and time for a bus or coach tour. We went to Windsor, Stonehenge, and Bath. Windsor Castle was our first stop. It was lovely. I would have loved time to explore the town a little more, but the castle itself, I thought we had a perfect amount of time. This little like Roomba lawnmower definitely had more people, including myself, interested than the castle behind it. That being said, <laughs> the castle was gorgeous. It was a very cool experience and it was surprisingly serene there as well um i do think that if you get the chance if you're in london you should stop by windsor if you can because it is a very neat experience I did nap a little on the bus ride to Stonehenge, but when I woke up it was to this beautiful, vibrant green landscape as we got closer to the Henge itself. It's a very lovely drive and basically the reason we had to do the coach tour was to get to Stonehenge because you can't just take public transportation as far as I could find. It was definitely the tour itself was worth it and visiting Stonehenge was definitely worth it grass or, or just on the on the field but if you were oh no i'm sorry i just want the sheep you were going to notice that i was preoccupied by the sheep and by some birds that were there yeah, this like i said stonehenge is lovely i mean look at that you can get so close even with the rope there it is a magnificent structure and piece of history to be able to get too clo so close to but i love sheep so very much and we were also very very close to some sheep so i took a lot of video of the sheep i should be a rancher i think is the takeaway here <laughs> And then after Stonehenge on to Bath, the city was beautiful and I would love someday to go back and spend maybe even a week there just enjoying it. I wish we could have visited Persephone Books, unfortunately they were closed, it was Sunday, but we did go to the Jane Austen Center Museum and we went to a bookshop called Toppings, both of which were absolute highlights, just outside of the city itself being a, a full-on highlight. We also had... 
like a British version of Chipotle. It wasn't Chipotle, it was called Tortilla, I think. And um, it was like British American Mexican food. It's surprisingly good, but strange. This is Topping's beautiful bookshop. I did not have the time to explore the whole thing just because we had to get on the road again. The landscape around Bath is part of the Cotswolds. Gorgeous. When I was abroad there, I did visit the Cotswolds for a day long trip. And, you know, I'm just completely and consistently in law with this. Uh, this is a mask of the king. It's amazing. And then the next day we went to the Tower of London and we visited Tower Bridge as well. As you can see, the Tower of London is really cool, a must see if you're in the city of London. Literally I would say it is probably even more interesting and more important than Buckingham Palace even. The Tower is so cool and actually later when we went on a ghost tour on a different day we returned to the Tower and got to hear some ghost stories sort of in addition to the actual history of this piece of history and of course yes we saw the ravens and we saw a dragon which very cool if if you don't mind me saying so surprising that I didn't have a lot of time to read on the trip because I was doing other things and on a trip but I was actually surprised I didn't get much past chapter four I'm really enjoying Witch King um, but yeah I just did not get far through it after Tower of London we went on a ghost tour and very cool it actually had us meet at this uh, fountain of Artemis, which I love. That's just amazing. The ghost tour itself was great. We got to see a lot of evening sights like this is Big Ben all lit up and just absolutely stunning and gorgeous, as well as a boat ride along the Thames, which if you've never been on a night boat ride along the Thames, you, you should. It, it's beautiful and just so calming and relaxing. The ghost tour itself was really great. I will link it down below because I strongly recommend it and our tour guide his name was uh, Eddie his name was Eddie he was just fantastic and he was very funny and yeah <laughs> really great tour all around The next day we went to Greenwich. We took the Greenwich uh, tunnel from Tower Hamlets, which is a little creepy and a lot more energy than you might suspect, but very cool experience. You get to walk underneath the river in Greenwich. We didn't spend too much time there. We did do a little bit of shopping. We ate at a pub and we most importantly went to the Royal Observatory. Very cool little museum. Very much feels more like a local type museum than super touristy and I think that made it an even better experience. Also, just absolutely filled the imagination. I think I will be writing a little bit about royal astronomers, or at least including them a little bit in possible future writing. Uh, so it's always fun to fill the well of imagination. I did go to quite a few bookshops while I was there. I didn't take too many videos. Uh, the Waterstones in Greenwich, I saw this sign, which I thought was really cute. Also went to foils. And here we are wandering around Seven Dials. And as you can see, that is the iconic inspiration for the Samantha Shannon book covers uh, for phone season. But yeah, we did a lot of wandering around, found some cute shops, I saw some really interesting things. I, yes, dragged my friend into quite a few bookshops. Spent quite a bit of money on books, but no regrets, no regrets at all.
I cannot believe we've come to our last day in London. We had a early lunch in Chinatown and then we went to the Piccadilly station to start our tour of some hidden tunnels, uh, undisused tunnels. We got really cool history lessons and we got to see some really old tile and our tour guides were just fantastic. Um, it was, you know, fully recommend. We also went to the TFL Museum afterwards where we ate and shopped a bit, though sadly we didn't actually have time to actually go into the museum. And TFL Museum is over in Camden Market. And then we went to we Phantom of the we Opera. Did, we, uh, we did have to take a little sitter in between. Um, but yeah, Phantom was how we finished our time in London. Look at that chandelier. The play was amazing, as always. And then it was time to leave. Our plane was not completely full, which was actually kind of nice and rather surprising. Or maybe not, because I don't know who actually wants to come back to America. Just kidding a little bit. I totally miss my dog and my books and my bed and my shower so very much. Uh, but I, I do miss London almost as much when I'm away from it. The ride home was quite a bit bumpier and I did get nauseous towards the end, but yeah, it was a safe journey. We landed basically right before the storms um, and now we're back and uh, time to start thinking about the next adventure, I guess. I know I didn't do a lot of talking to the camera on this vlog because we were just like going, going, going for this trip. So there will be a lot of voiceover recorded probably after the fact where I explain what's going on and all the clips I shared. But I wanted to just say it was an amazing trip. It was so good. Part of me is sad it was only a week, but part of me is so, so happy to be home that um, I'm glad it wasn't longer. I did end up picking up a lot of books so I want to run through them all with you right now and show you because I'm super excited for all of them they all came home with me in checked luggage except for the one that I started like peeking through and reading um I was in my head I was like okay seven books that's kind of like the limit I want to be at but I definitely lost my mind and got I think 16 17 17 books so yeah I don't no one is surprised and the thing is I got actually mostly like literature books and I'm excited for like I'm excited for all these but that section of my bookshelves really needs to be redone so probably those books won't even be going on the shelf yet they'll just be going on a pile near the shelf I am hoping that by the end of the summer I will have the new shelves that I've been waiting to get and that I can do like a reorganization video which can be really exciting when that happens but before I go into the actual books, um, two other things that I got while I was there were <laughs> these socks, which absolutely blow my mind. We went to the National Transport Museum, which is maybe my favorite place, and I regret that I didn't have more time there. This this is the pattern of the central line seats, which is my favorite line and the one I'm most comfortable with. And now, like, back of my hand uh, from living there five years ago and this trip even made me feel so good that I like still remembered so much of it. I like absolutely am dead and in love with these socks. We'll be wearing them to work um, as often as I wash them. They also sold pillows that felt like the fabric like from the actual seats. So I really wanted one of those but I did not get it because it would have been really hard to pack. But we did also go to the Moomin store so I got Moomin bookends which I'm really excited for and I cannot wait to put them up on my shelf so these can actually probably go up right away I'm probably going to just like for now just use them as like displays rather than actual bookends because I don't think I need the bookends at the moment but I am just very excited for them oh I love them they're so cute now on to the books so this one is Thirsty Sword Lesbians this is actually an RPG game this is the uh the first book there's a um, an expansion that they put out as well. It teaches you how to play as well as the classes and it gives you uh, suggestions for games to play. I am um, actually, I saw this and I was like in love with it. Part of me was like this would be probably a really fun um, sort of structure to use for a possible like Gideon the Ninth type game. But I'm actually, I was talking with my friend that I went with and we were like, we have this idea to possibly run a campaign with this. It's going to be modified a little bit and maybe a little closer to 5e because that's what we're more familiar with. But super, super excited. 
It is so cute. Um, there are a bunch of different types of thirsty lesbians. And no, there's a disclaimer then. You don't have to play as a lesbian. It's an inclusive game that's encouraging queer stories. But it looks like a lot of fun. And the ways you like get points or whatever is like, you can like flirting is like a whole like mechanic. So it's very cool. Lots of fun. Cannot wait to play this. Probably it will be at the end of the summer though, because my current D&D game is in its final arc. Oh my goodness. So, so scared. Um, but the other books, uh, we have Owlish by Dorothy C. Or C. Uh, this is a Fitzcarraldo book. I love Fitzcarraldo editions. I've only owned one in the past, but I, I, whenever people post them online, I'm like, these are so pretty. Why don't they publish in the U.S.? But that's okay. This is um, written by Dorothy C. and translated by Natasha Bruce. I actually, this is one I've started reading. I'm about 70 pages in. It has been interesting. It has a little bit of Murakami surrealism, although it's definitely much more of a book focused on the internal character and the memories of our character. So not Murakami outside of some of the like surrealist elements really did make me think that way. And the way dialogue is actually written is very Murakami to me as well. But I'm enjoying this. I was getting a bit queasy on the plane as we were coming in for landing and as well as reading so I might have to take a day off of this so that I don't just associate queasiness with this book because I was enjoying it up until that point. Then I picked up Eileen by Atessa Moshweg. This is um, I've not read any Atessa Meshweg, but I now have three of her books. I picked this up partly because I really like how the spine looks actually. I I feel like one thing I love about UK, UK editions of books, particularly like literature, is that they have like cohesive spines typically across publishers or somewhat cohesive spines across publishers and fairly cohesive spines across authors. And I just enjoy that, how it looks on the shelf. I picked this up. I think I got this one. Yeah, I got this one at Foils. And yeah, I have zero idea what this is, but I think it is the shortest mosh bag I own. So I might do this. I don't know. I keep saying I'm going to read her and I probably will. And it probably will be this summer. It probably will. Picked up To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. And actually I got home and I saw that my Illumicrate set of the Wayfarers is here. So I think that actually completes my Becky Chambers collection. This is really short. I read Monk and Robot earlier this year. So I'm thinking I will read this one next just to do all the really short stuff and then read Wayfarers. This I picked up at Gaze the Word, which was, yes, absolutely my favorite bookshop that we visited. I wish it was closer so I could visit it literally every week. I would be such a menace there. I picked up also at Gaze the Word, The Light of Beauty by Alan Hollinghurst. I read Swimming Pool Library a couple months ago and I enjoyed it while I read it, but it wasn't like a favorite. But now that I am done with it and like have moved past it it has not moved past me and it has been sitting with me and has this really long sort of effect on my brain and my thoughts of it so I'm really excited to read The Line of Beauty which I think is actually probably Ellen Hollinghurst's better known one I believe there's a film based off of this book and it also just kind of sounds like not dark academia that's not what I'm gonna say but like in the sort of like posh realm that sometimes or preppy I guess realm that sometimes dark academia can kind of glide along like it just has like similar aesthetics based off the description I guess anyway it just it sounds a lot like a book I would like it's definitely a bit longer and again look at that spine this is the picador collection which I've actually been meaning to get a couple books in and now that I have one book in the collection the collection can definitely start uh, English Pastoral and Inheritance by James Rebanks. This is a nonfiction. I'm going to believe it is the only non... Nope, there's one other nonfiction that I picked up. This is about, like, living in the English countryside, I believe. And I got this at... I thought the bookmark would have said. I think I picked this up at Foils. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at Foils. I love nature writing and this is sort of in that realm and I also again love the spine. I love how the nonfiction penguins have that orange spine. I think it is so pretty and actually one of my goals when going I was like I want to pick up at least one nonfiction with an orange spine, penguin orange spine. So I did that and I'm really excited for this one. I'd not heard of it before but the other book that James Rebanks had there had a um, recommendation like on the cover from Robert McFarlane, who I love, but this one sounded more interesting. So I was like, well, if, if Rob McFarlane likes the other one, probably this is written by the same author. Probably it's still also very good. So yeah, very excited for this. And I feel like spring is like nearly over, but I might try to wedge this in. 
this I got at the National uh, Theater, which I like, I love reading plays. I bet you did not know that. I love reading plays and I love seeing theater and plays, but I don't have uh, easy resources for them. And I also don't really have anywhere to browse for plays outside of classic stuff. And I'm more interested in contemporary plays. This one is Women Beware the Devil. Absolutely love this cover. It is written by Lulu Raksha. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And yeah, very excited. I was debating between this and another one, but this one definitely took the cake. And I will probably, after I read it, see if I can browse if National Theatre has a bookshop online. I'm not actually sure if they do or not. Hopefully they do make it easier for me to <laughs> browse it. And the um, when I checked out the a woman at the till said it was amazing so very excited about that as well a book i have been highly anticipating reading it is a chunker um it feels like a summary book but probably not this year probably next year i've been highly anticipating it i want it in this edition i was going to buy it in this edition regardless i saw it while i was there and i was like yes that is ducks newberry port by lucy elman i am so excited this uh in the uk it is published by gallery beggar press and similar to the fitzgeraldo editions they all have very simple covers and the spines although their covers are not always the same color they kind of vary their covers which i think is cool ducks newberry port is basically only a couple sentences long it's run-on sentences and i've heard they're just it's such an exquisite experience i mean like look at this there's like no paragraphs i'm so excited to read this book i'm so excited one thing i love about gallery beggar press and fitzcarraldo with their simple covers besides it just being very like aesthetically appealing i think because they both publish literature and i'm not sure if gallery beggar press does nonfiction, but fitzcarraldo does but it's very much like literary nonfiction or um highbrow nonfiction, you know but the simple covers I feel really lend themselves to making you just look at the words and just read the words and I really appreciate that it gives the focus to the language which is in literature most of the times the case that you want to focus on the language and it really takes away a lot of the distractions not that covers are distracting but I like that what it is doing for the books they publish in their genres is very much like Look at the words. I like that. Anyway. And then I got this Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. It is a Persephone edition. I really wanted to go to Persephone Books, but when we were in Bath, it was Sunday and they were closed. And it probably should look that up ahead of time. But the reason we we're going to Bath was not just for Persephone books. There was a lot of other stuff we wanted to do. That was just kind of like a side um side thing if we had time. Also, I'm so sorry. I look messy. I woke up like an hour ago and I wanted to film this so I could continue cleaning from last night because I got in last night. This one, I'm not 100% certain was about when I was flipping through it, though, I was really enjoying it. Um, so I'm really excited for this one. I got this one at Topping Books, I think they're called, in Bath. Also, I think I got these next two at Topping Books, The Willful Princess and the Peebled Prince by Robin Hobb. This is part of the Realm of the Elderlings, but I believe it is actually just the, the true story of the willful princess and the people of prince which is like an anti-witted narrative during the time of the uh of Fitz being alive so i'm going to read this after i finish the um the tawny man trilogy so i'm really excited it's also really short and i'm excited to see the oh there's art that i didn't even notice before i'm excited to see how something like this stacks up to uh to the the story the narrative that is told during the time of Fitz. And then the last one I got at, I, th I think this was at Topping Books too. I could be totally wrong, but this is More Do by Alex Phoebe, or Phoebe. It is also a chunker. I did not realize it was a chunker. I've only seen the US hardcover edition before and I don't remember it being this big. I am not going to read the back because I read the back once and then saw a review that said the back spoiled things. So I'm trying to forget the back. I really want to read this. It sounds really good. I've only heard fantastic things. I've heard it's weird. It is definitely giving vibes similar to Titus uh, grown and um that series that I started reading but didn't have like the mental capacity for at the moment but was enjoying and I enjoyed the aesthetics of look at the little rat so I'm really excited to add this to my fantasy collection I did like I said didn't get a lot of fantasy this was probably the biggest one this one and Peebald Prince um and then obviously got the Becky Chambers yeah I got a couple other like somewhat fantasies but this is the biggest this is really the only fantasy I picked up 
Then I believe I got this at Waterstones. I had like 40 pounds worth of credits at Waterstones to spend. So I actually did a whole trip where I got five books for free or free, you know, with my credit. I was so, so happy about that. And actually I am one stamp away from my next 10 pound credit. So not to brag, but I spend lots of money. <laughs> we have A Death in the Family by, uh, I'm probably saying his name wrong, Carl Uwe Nauskid. Um, this is the first book in my struggle. Uh, it's a book that I have wanted to try and I feel like it will open up a sort of mini subgenre of life narrative um, that is fiction but semi-autobiographical biographical, and very much epic. So something like uh, um, is it a story of a friend series or what is it? The Neapolitan Quartet by Elena Ferrante is another one that seems like it's somewhat similar in the genre, or I think most famously, uh, Proust's uh, books would, would fall into a similar genre. Um, I think John Fosse's uh, Septology of the new name is that what they're called also kind of fall in that genre. So yeah, it's something that has kind of been at the outskirts of like my awareness and that I wanted to step into it. But this one seems like it'll be either this one or the Elena Ferrante that gets me my toes wet in that um, subclass of book. I'm really excited and again I really wanted the UK editions because I knew the spines looked so nice. Although I don't hate the American editions of these either. I think they're very very cool. Uh, this is Atonement by Ian McEwan. I've never read anything by Ian McEwan and I actually had no interest until I saw a couple reviews I think on Instagram I want to say it was on Instagram where they were talking about this book and it actually did sound interesting. I'm not at all certain what it is about I am going to try to read it before I see the film, but if I don't get to it this year, I might just like watch the film first and then go in and read the book. Uh, if that is not the decision I should be making, do let me know. Because if you're like, no, 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 you would enjoy the uh, the book so much more if you don't see the film. Let me know because I don't want to make that mistake. Well, again, look at that spine. And the other vintage I got, like they're not perfect but they aren't like they they match enough that like you glance at it you know it's vintage is publishing them so and vintage also does marakami like i just love how they all look together i love that you know i love my collections the other Fitzcarraldo i got was a non-fiction it is porn and oral history by polly barton i have been wanting to read this for a while and i did actually tell myself that if i saw it there i was going to purchase it i bought it at gaze the word i'm super excited i am currently reading a non-fiction book um, on and off it's not like my main read at all it's called uh the curious history of sex it is by kate lister it's really interesting really good it's more historical and it actually talks a lot about language so far in the book which i'm a hundred percent enjoying i love watching how language forms porn i believe goes through you know we talk about it's conversations about porn and pornography and it's done with sort of people from all walks of life and lots of backgrounds different ages sexualities um and just all these factors and it sounds really interesting and i've only heard good things so i think that's cool and i think what a flex if i like read that out in public you know just a like a little cherry on top i also picked up quartet in autumn by barbara pym i actually did not realize that I would be wanting the UK edition of this because I did not realize that it had this beautiful spine. It is a Picador classic. I did not know that they had cohesive spinage. We've already been through how I love cohesive spinage. I read a Barbara Pym last month, two months ago, and it was um, Jane and prudence i loved it i absolutely loved it and fell in love with barbara pym this is i think one of the only that isn't published by virago modern classics or virago classics and so i'm really excited very short she doesn't really have anything long i don't think absolutely love her voice and um seriously in love with her writing so i'm very excited for quartet and autumn i actually seen this at work when i was cleaning up the fiction section one time and like mentally added it to my tbr so that was even before I read anything she'd written. So I'm very excited to have that. And then getting on to our last two. We have by Ash, Oak, and Thorn by Melissa Harrison. This sounds adorable. It's giving me cottagecore springtime vibes. Do expect to see a cottagecore video coming out this year. I am really excited to get to it because I think it's going to be loads of fun. And I will probably add this to my reading list for that day. I don't read a lot of middle grade because I just don't spend a lot of time looking at middle grade books, but I want to expand and read more middle grade and this will make it a little easier. And then the last one, I also got this at Topping. This is Mischief X by Zoe Gilbert. 
I had not heard about this, but I have actually seen it everywhere I was at while I was there. It sounds interesting. It has a lot to do with British folklore and with her and the hunter, who is a mischief maker. So excited and curious about this one. It is probably not top of priority list, but maybe when spooky season rolls around, I will pick it up. We'll see. That's it. Those are every single book I got. I have a little bit of cleaning left to do. I want to start my laundry. I, um, yeah, I'm taking today really chill. It is, I have this last day off and then I go back to work tomorrow, which I might be miserable at, but it's fine. And then I, um, I'm off on Sunday again. So Friday today is me just finishing cleaning up and sort of recentering myself in this time zone and doing some reading and some last minute relaxing. And even though this trip was a lot, like a lot of energy, I do feel really relaxed. I did not think about work like at all. And I let myself just have a lot of fun, which was really great and really needed. And I'm actually excited to go back to work. So I, I really needed that reset. It's a shame I'm out of vacation days though, because I have a feeling I will need that reset again. Although I'm really going to work to having a better work life sort of balance for the next couple of months, which I will probably talk about in upcoming vlogs. I have a feeling that's what a lot of my goals will be based around at the moment. Yeah, so today, recentering. Tomorrow, dipping my toes back into work, and then I'm off on Sunday, and so I will let myself have a day to sort of refresh and restart and get all my goals kind of written down and my schedule written down and all that good stuff. All right, so thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with me. I hope you had as much fun watching this trip as I had tag taking this trip, or at least a fraction of that fun. It it was great. It has been five years since I've been to London, and hopefully in five years or sooner, I will be back there again. That is the goal. I will see you guys soon. Hopefully, I will be back on track with making YouTube videos, and I hope you're all taking care. I hope if you're somewhere cold, you're staying warm and if you're somewhere warm you're staying comfortable and most of all i hope you're reading a great book i will see you guys next time bye